Yes. I'm back. It's Missy and Echo, your whispering bike mechanic. And this is my second attempt at making a video on patching tubes. Yeah, the first one didn't go so well because I, I ran out of tubes, I ran out of battery, and <laughs> yeah, I think I ran out of space on one of my SD cards. So, anyways, here's round two. So, I'm not going to talk about it too, too much because it's fairly straightforward. Uh, tools you'll need for this are a bike pump, a made patch kit. I've got several of them here. Yeah. Um, you might want a bucket of water. Now, um, I don't know if we'll actually use the bucket of water. I'm actually hoping we won't have to, because if you don't have to, it's usually cleaner that way. Um, yeah, because then you don't have to dry the tubes before you prep and apply the patch. And I'm going to try and get you guys to help me a bit in listening for the leaks. Yeah, that's actually one of the most effective ways of finding a leak in a tube, is you just pump it up and then you move it along close to your ear until you can hear a faint hissing sound and then you know you found a leak. Yeah, it's only when you can't quite hear it or feel it that you need to use the bucket of water. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Okay, so I'm just going to put these aside for now. So we can just work on one at a time. Oh man, this one's already got like four patches on it. Wonder if I want to fix this one. But we'll do it anyway, because patches are cheap.
much better. And of course you want to have a smooth surface for the patch to go onto. Because any kind of ridges they can uh, make channels for the air to get in between. basically chemically melts the rubber that patch on there and squeeze out as much of the fluid as you can. Yeah, you really want to just kind of scrape it around just to make sure that it doesn't have any air bubbles underneath of it and especially that the edges are firmly pressed down. Alright, so I'm just going to move that one. 
aside. We'll come back to it after reading this one. So, just pump this one up. Localizing where the hole is. You can, if you just sort of run it along your upper lip, then you can feel exactly where the air is coming out.
surface around the hole. Just apply our rubber sides. Rubber sides say we won't get them to the fluid. Well, actually, it says rubber sand right on it. <laughs> Never mind. stuff it's better if you put on too much rather than too little. Yes, if you put too much on it just kind of slides around. If you put too little on it just doesn't stick right. off when you wash it anyway, it's, it's not really a big deal. side for now. And we'll go back to our first one, which should be set. And we have these peel off of the plastic backing. And now, hopefully when we pump it up, it'll stay pumped up.
this time. Oh well, it's not gonna make that much difference. I'll just take a little bit longer to draw here. Let's see, in the meantime, I'll just scrape off the excess with this piece of wrapping. Depending on how good a job you want to do on these, it doesn't necessarily have to be as time consuming as I made it, but I don't know. These guys I find unless I really make sure to press them down well and get a good edge set up, they don't actually work that well. But that's just patch in general. There are other kinds of patches, but these ones happen to be my favorite. I mean, this style. You know, just because you seem to get the strongest kind of patch this way, whereas other ones, like, you know, ones that are just kind of like stickers, they seem like they become unstuck really easily. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so it looks like that's starting to dry. That aside, we'll be back to our other one. Lots of contact there.
this side.
into the next.
was the river in that area was looking kind of questionable. this in place and might as, well, might as well look for the lid that I somehow lost to my rubber cement. Oh, <laughs> there it is. It's like stuck on one of those backing pieces. There we go.
rubber is decaying. I just wonder if this one's worth it. <laughs> so I think that wool is just from the degradation of the rubber. that other tiny patch on it. We'll see.
Oh yeah, I kind of forgot to mention, whenever you're doing this, it's a good idea when you're actually applying the patches, if you uh, deflate the tube first. Yeah, because otherwise the tube will be expanded when you apply it, and then when you uh, deflate it afterwards, the tube will shrink more than the patch, and then you're more likely to have the patch spontaneously unstick itself. And that's never any good. Yeah, these things stretch pretty good, but they don't really shrink that well. it in until the cement dries. So that's starting to dry. And we'll just put that aside. And we'll peel the backing off of this patch that we put on here a few minutes ago. Oh, that looks good. That will be it from this room. And this 
the side. And last one. This man might not even have any oaks yet, but just to be sure, I'm going to try the bucket water test. Yeah, so all we're doing is we just move it through and make the bubbles.
that's the problem with this method is that uh, it's really hard to keep track of the position because you've got no way to do it other than to put it under water. I have approximate memory. So I know it's somewhere right in there. And we'll just hope that we got the right spot.
totally see uh, that phenomenon I was talking about before. That's how the patch kind of didn't shrink too well. Oops, oh well. Damn. I think I got this patch in the wrong place. So we don't have to do that much prep work on this one because we already did it before. Thank you. 